Good morning. Um, the ostensible topic for today is change and its influence on power. Sounds very fancy, but you know what? I'm a little fed up with change. The moment something gets constant in our lives, it changes. I mean, there's a hole in front of my house in Main Road because a new flyover is coming there. It's supposed to be good for you. How many years will it take for the flyover to come? Well, that's another. But there's change. My mobile phone changes because someone or the other is trying to convince me that their phone is better. Whenever I look at my phone, I am told a smartphone is a better option. My dumb phone is indeed very dumb. Change it. My telephone bill changes. My electricity bill changes. Thanks to the government, my petrol bill is changing forever. <laughs> my LPG prices change and to such an extent, even my toothpaste changes. Once we were told fluoride works for us, then we were told Ayurveda works for us, and now someone on the television points a finger at me and says, Kya ke toothpaste mein namak hai? No, nahi hai yaar, khana nahi hai. But no, you should change. Because change is supposedly good. And I really want to understand, why is change so overrated? Why do we believe that changing actually makes things better? I mean, there was a time in our life when things didn't change, and somehow, Every single one in this room and those who are possibly watching this video, the memories which we cherish the most are those memories that somehow had something constant in them. We don't remember our iPhone's first purchase. We might just remember the swing which we were, which we sat on when we were kids. We might remember our prep, our nursery school. We might remember uh, running the rain with a friend of ours. What was so memorable about those things which looked so boring on the outside? The bizarre part is that we chase change so much that unfortunately something inside us begins to change. And that something inside us is where the entire problem slash solution lies. Let me propose a thought to you. The human mind is essentially unhappy. Human beings are incapable of being happy. Allow me to explain. Somebody somewhere didn't like to light a candle, he invented electricity. Somebody somewhere didn't like his doors open at night, he invented a lock. Someone somewhere did not enjoy waiting for a phone call at his house, he invented a mobile phone. Someone somewhere didn't like to do manual mental mathematics, he invented a calculator. Essentially, unhappiness was the seed of invention. But surprisingly, it is not unhappiness that we chase. It's quite the opposite. Because you know, bizarrely, with our iPhone and our fancy cars and our big houses and our bank balances, the actual dream of ours has always been this little bird who sits on our windowsill, which we know is pretty, but the moment we turn to look at it, it's gone. It's called happiness. And surprisingly, somewhere along the way, we forget that it was actually for something else that the car was bought. And surprisingly, the purchase of the car doesn't give us that. Do you know why? Because we occupy big offices with small minds. We occupy big egos with small reasons to have that ego. We forget that at the end of the day, this entire journey ends, and in the next equation, yeah, you may have a great time balance. Your photograph might be published in a leading daily when you are dead on page two. Late so and so, Chautha, Uthala, Antim, Das. But at the end of the day, were you richer or were you poorer for it? Brings me to my second hypothesis I want to propose to the audience today. To what extent is change really good? And to what extent does change make us happy or it doesn't? So when we open this little book of ours, which is, uh, how shall I say, the happiness manifesto, it starts with a small saying, which once a wise man told me, happiness comes first, the rest doesn't matter. And if you look on the right hand side, you will see a small little graph which I have made myself. And you can see a small smile there which says a wonderful term called the happiness millipede. In my personal opinion, and please adopt it in your life if you can, it is the perfect point where happiness is the highest. The change which is at perfect unison with that happiness is the right amount of change which should be in a person's life. Beyond that, happiness dips, 
change increases. Look at your own life. Look at those of your parents. They may be rich, but essentially, are they necessarily happy? Our quest, in other words, should be something about the happiness of equilibrium. It's our own freaky economics in a way. But yeah, at the end of the day, I'd rather have accomplished five things less in my life. I'd rather have earned five thousand dollars less in my life. But I want to have a smile on my face. Because eight, ladies and gentlemen, is the rarest commodity you can ever have. Brings me to my first story of today. And that story is about the giraffe across the room. And once upon a time, okay, let me say it as it was. It was a Sunday afternoon and I was sitting with my five-year-old son, Sakya, and we were watching television. He watches cartoons too much, so I was trying to change him, asking him to watch Nat Geo and Animal Planet instead. And he sat with me and you know it was one of those animal blooper kind of videos. I'm sure you've seen one of those. Man versus wild, animal attacks, man, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And in that video, there was a giraffe who was running down a freeway in an American city. A full-grown adult male giraffe. And it's quite a sight, obviously, to be old. Can you imagine cars, Volvo, and giraffe? So, yeah, but it was happening right there. So I tapped my son and I said, Sakya, what's wrong? Quickly, tell me what's wrong with this picture. Nothing. <laughs> Come on, freak. Look at it carefully. What is that? It's a giraffe. I know so. Where is it? It's on a road. What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> I don't know what a giraffe is. Something wrong with you. <laughs> Sakya, it's on the road. What's the problem? Shouldn't it be in a... Is that jungle? Yes. Thank you very much. He said, no, but it's right. He said, why? He's going from one jungle to another. <laughs> and you know something at that moment, my adult intelligence told me that, yeah, what bad. <laughs> but a more basic intelligence told me, wow, it's logic at a most basic time level. Because that child, of course the story comes in because I love him very dearly, so obviously it's nice to have the story with your own child and your own presentation. But a very important learning came out for me personally that day. For him, it was very similar to process. Giraffe lives in a jungle. There is one jungle, there is another jungle. How do you go across two places? By a road. Hence, giraffe goes from jungle A to jungle B by a road. The simplest solutions somehow come from within us without fancy education. Because you know something? Despite what the world tells you to do, we all have a genetic imprint that makes us smart. We choose to murder that imprint inside us as we grow up. And that's the unfortunate truth. That little something that makes us enjoy what we're doing. Let's have a look at another video to begin to understand what this little something is all about. This is what I like to call the candy challenge. Avery, how are you? Four. You're four. Logan, how are you? Two. Two? Yeah. You just turned three. Ready? Avery, go get a piece of that candy. Let's see you do it. Okay. Can I open it now? Oh. Logan, go get a piece of that candy. Okay. Oh. Got you got it. Programmed to 
believe. We were programmed to enjoy that very moment, not to think about what's going to happen three hours later, three days later, three months or three years later. I mean, if I was to look back at my childhood, and some of you are still young in comparison to what I am and what your parents are, there are a lot of things you already are not doing because you are supposedly growing up. There's a part of you that is already being killed. And that part has the basic kernel of happiness. It used to manifest itself in fun, in enjoying the moon, in being stupid, in not knowing what you're doing, but just doing it for the heck of it. Because every single moment had to come. You did your exams well, you studied well, because you used to go out and play in the evenings. Friends used to be not decided basis what they bring to the table in terms of the pickup vehicles that they have, or the kind of partners they throw, but for the kind of friendship they offer, the warmth, the conversation, the stupid innings. If you change the child in you, everything changes. And if you look at what all were the gifts that we had as a child, which I'm sorry, most of us adults have completely lost. Once upon a time, we used to be very, very curious. We used to want to know more, want to find out more, find out things that were of interest, even if it didn't matter. I would like to ask all of us here, when was the last time we got curious over nothing? Why a man goes round? Why is peace silent in psychology? It's fun to know. It's fun to be curious. You never know what to end up with. <coughs> a bigger quality we used to be foolish. We didn't care about asking a question in class. We didn't care about being joked at. When we become older and supposedly mature, we end up worrying about those very facts. It was a great time to be foolish. We enjoyed it. And even now, someone like Steve Jobs can say, stay hungry, stay foolish, we buy it. Because Steve Jobs has said it. But what made Steve Jobs Steve Jobs? Because he stayed foolish. Excitable. Everything was exciting for us once upon a time. Unfortunately, you will understand as you grow older, adults, boring, monotonous, repetitive, greedy, selfish, jealous. I can go on. Somewhere in that, they try and find happiness by purchasing something. Most importantly, we used to enjoy business. We fell off bicycles, we scraped our knees, we went and got ourselves cut somewhere. I have more cuts and bruises to remind of my childhood than I have gone in the last 20 years. And each of those cuts was a bag on my chest of an experience that I had. These days we try and avoid even the experiences because less we get injured, less there be a risk factor, let's avoid it and die. And it used to be fun over and above. Because if it's fun, it's worth doing. Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates started things because they were fun, not because they know 20 years later they'd be billionaires. If you have fun, you will get direction. Without it, most of us, even till today, are finding our direction in life. The older you grow, the less direction you have. Mark Miller. Which brings me to a lovely story from one of my favorite books, Alice in Wonderland. And in Alice in Wonderland, the lovely little part that says, one day Alice came to a fork in the road and saw a Cheshire cat in a tree. Well, you should go and she asked. Where do you want to go was the response. I don't know, Alice answered. Then said the cat. It doesn't matter. If you have fun, you know where to go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is of the extreme essence. And that journey all begins with butterflies. In physics and in the chaos theory, it's called the butterfly effect. And the butterfly effect, basically I'll zoom into that part, that butterfly effect says, it has been said that something as small as a flutter of a butterfly's wings can ultimately cause a life to come around the world. Your actions today, whether they are rooted in greed, in the so-called angles of maturity, not necessarily greed, but the so-called angles of killing the child inside you growing up, or is it rooted in fun, can decide the direction you take. To explain the butterfly effect for all of your uh, understanding, had a plane not crashed into the Twin Towers on 9-11, the world might have been different today. In case the pilots had a change of heart a few seconds before taking on the flight, things might have been different. There was a single revolutionary who fired one shot that killed the air to 
I think the Austro-Hungarian throne, Hungarian throne, the Archduke Ferdinand. He killed him out of personal vendetta against the mission. It started World War I. What you do today, the decision that you make today, will alter tomorrow. Would you rather choose happiness as the factor that decides your tomorrow, or the usual banal factors, fiddling with mobiles and sitting in the back seats of air conditioned cars? It will be dirty, you'll have to get your hands dirty, you'll have to start something from scratch, you might even face resistance. You might have to face fail again and again, but you know what? You have those cuts and those bruises that you were so proud of as a kid because they made you happy. So, please remember, never change the child inside. He knows exactly what makes you happy. Because what's of even greater importance is if we can be the child and the adult simultaneously, You'll have all the things going for you and you'll know that you're doing them because you enjoy it. But if you change that, everything changes. Ladies and gentlemen, may you fly with the butterflies. <laughs>